All right, so now let's ask the audience. Uh, clap, uh, since it's a little hard to see in here, if you would want to have your genome sequenced to, to answer some questions about your health. <laughs> now, um, as loud as you can, just individually and randomly, and uh, just call out what disease you want to know most about. Just c call it out. Cancer. Alzheimer's. Heart disease. Heart disease. What else? Cancer. What? Cancer. 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 Okay, great. Anything else? Parkinson's. Parkinson's. Schizophrenia. Schizo schizophrenia. Okay, great. Now, can can um, I want to know about all of those? <laughs> My kids think I have some of those, actually. Um, <laughs> how much help can doctors be with probabilities of some of the things the audience has uh, shouted out here? Well, I hate to sound like the quantum guy, but a lot and almost none at all. Because <laughs> <laughs> what you've just heard is the sound of a cat that is both dead and alive. Right. <laughs> because if you are one of the, let's say, 2% in this audience that's carrying a very highly penetrant mutation for one of the rare forms of these conditions, rare form of cancer that's very heritable, rare form of heart disease that's very heritable, you probably would want to know, you probably could get that information, and it could probably help you avoid the disease. But there's a lot of potential confusion because the rest of us will get probabilistic information. You'll get the information that you're a little bit above average or a little bit below average. And that, the, the experts are really debating whether that's going to help you or just confuse you. I mean, it's a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Yeah, and it's the question of, we have this enormous narrative of determinism in genetics. We have cut our teeth on the low-hanging fruit in genetics, which was the highly penetrant diseases. Huntington's disease, you get the disease if you have the mutation. PKU, you get the disease if you have the two bad copies. All those early diseases we uh, discovered were definite things, but most of the diseases in genetics and genomics are actually highly probabilistic. They're risk markers, and that hasn't penetrated our psyche. It hasn't penetrated the psyche of doctors. It hasn't really penetrated the psyche of the audience. You've said that we're conditioned to think of genetics as deterministic, that there is information buried in the gene that is going to deliver an outcome or predict an outcome with a high degree of accuracy. And you're saying right now, at the state of the science, in fact, most of what the gene can tell us is very much a kind of a dice rolling, probabilistic bit of information. Now, is that to say that 100 years from now, we're not going to get more deterministic in terms of our understanding of things? In other words, as we research and get more information about the gene, are some of these things that are probabilistic going to become more deterministic? Or is it more like quantum mechanics, where we're going to find a break-off point in genetics where these phenomena are essentially probabilistic and you're never going to know, but up to that point, you're going to know. Well, first of all, uh, we're focusing on predictive power of genetics. That's what we're talking about right now. And right now, we're using genetics, even in that probabilistic vein, to find targets for new therapies. So that's going on right now. The genomic revolution isn't as wishy-washy as we're making it sound. It's really helping us with basic science that's going to make difference in the, in the short term. But I do think you're right. I think it's going to take many decades for us to get more predictive with our genetic markers. And it's going to be discovery of more genes, discovery of more variants, discovery of epigenetic phenomena, which means the things that turn your genes up and down and sort of like a rheostat. Uh, so there's going to have to be proteomic layering of information on this. The microbiome is going to come into play, all the environmental interactions with your genome. It turns out it's fantastically complicated. And so I do think it's going to take a while to be more specifically predictive. Mm -hmm.